It's Carson and Kennedy, the Mix Lounge with Hosier. The album Wasteland Baby is out now. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Good. It's good to see you. You too. You too. A lot of cookies right now. A lot of cookies. The, yeah. All the conversation is about cookies. We've been talking cookies, like yeah quite yeah but i mean it's a worthwhile conversation to have i saw you sneaking cookies out in a laundry bag yeah that's right we're in a hotel <laughs> we're in, in kind of like a hotel room and we've been given loads of cookies so I'm and they're delicious delicious they're cookies pretty damn good, and so. The, so are they all for you or are you going to share with the band if the band are lucky some of those 20 <laughs> cookies <laughs> might find their way but you know <laughs> so i want to talk to you about the album mm -hmm. uh i mean you just come right out with the first song with mavis staples on there and uh, it's just such a powerful message with this song. How did how did you end up recording a song with Mavis Staples? Oh my God, um, it was kind of we had pa myself and Mavis Staples. I've always been a huge, huge, huge fan. We had passed uh, each other a few times on my last tour uh, from the first album, and there was kind of talk. I had gone back and forth of maybe us getting a chance to do something together, and it never, never. We could never make it work. Um, so I would have given my right arm at any point to, to work with Mavis. I think she's a super important, just an important artist. And also, you know, just a, an incredible legacy. And like, um, But when that song kind of started to make sense to me, and it was a, a kind of about artists who, who sang about what they sang about, it just made clear sense that it had to be Mavis. And, and uh, we reached out, sent her a rough cut of the song, and she she dug it and that was we flew out to chicago actually myself and marcus drafts who was uh, producing it with me i um, wanted to ask you that did you guys record it together yeah is we, that intimidating it's it w not when it's mavis i gotta say i mean yeah i was t i was freaked out you know meeting mavis for the first cause that, was, that was the first time then i was probably sitting down with her talking to her i wanted to make sure she was cool with the lyrics and cool with what what the kind of vision for the song was and, right. and uh, but she so i was i was intimidated uh of course but like w as soon as i met her fi four minutes in five minutes in she is the warmest kindest like most generous person i've ever met in my life you know she's just such a sweet just such a special person so it's, all of that kind of melted away very quickly. and your voice is incredible Thank not just on that song but on the album i just feel like the, you must have been putting in the time and the work because it sounds just unbelievable thank you yeah um i don't know i think i think i was writing I think I was definitely writing songs that were would be more fun to sing and more fun to bring out live, you know, and so having like opening it up a bit more, you know. Right. So yeah. What is the uh, what is the process like when you're writing these songs? I'm kind of curious. We had a chance last summer to interview Bono and the Edge. We've had them on the show a few yeah. times, and you talk about prolific songwriters and and writing songs about what's going on in society. Yeah. Is that something that's in the back of your mind when you're writing a song? I, th I think so. That the, the hope is that you're trying to be honest with the work and um, uh, that you're just you know. And I think we all write about what interests us and what moves us. But uh, and so I just I follow that. But uh, hopefully you're, you're trying to write something that is that honestly reflects just how you experience the world and that could be good and that could be bad you know um, but yeah um, but for, for writing I, th I think it just it starts with a very very small idea and that could just be a sentence or it mm -hmm. could be two lines or three mm -hmm. lines or a, or a melodic idea and then it just you just kind of flesh it out from there you know do you ever write the title first or do you start with the melody or you kind of you sometimes have like what you what you call a tag so like um What's the crux, or what's what's the not to use a, a word like the punchline, mm -hmm. but what's the what's the the core center of the song, mm -hmm. and then you kind of flesh it out from there. And sometimes the song, sometimes the title makes sense, and sometimes you, you kind of. Do you remember when uh, "Take Me to Church" yeah came to happen? Where you were when that came yeah. to fruition? Yeah, that was like that was a solid year sitting in my in like a little notebook I had at the time, like a little journal. And I was collecting lyrical ideas for that over the course of a year. I remember when some of those ideas were first penned down. And then I remember when I knew it kind of made sense as a full song once once the chorus was written. Mm -hmm. um, and was it? I don't even remember naming the song. <laughs> I think it really? just was, I think it was, yeah. I think to name it anything else would have been a bit silly, to be honest. But uh, um, yeah, definitely. So, but that that was, it, it, that stands out as a kind of a, one song that took me a long time to write, you know, it took me about a year to write that song. Usually it happens a little quicker for you? Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Nobody wants to take a year? No one wants to take a year. You Five, see why this ten years took, later. This album took me a good few years. Yeah. Right, so this is your, your yeah. second album, and it feels yeah. like, yeah. at least from my perspective, from the outside in, mm -hmm. that you've been around longer yeah. than just two albums. Yeah, yeah, it feels like, does it feel like that for me too? It doesn't actually, I don't know, I don't know. I, 
I don't know. I didn't want to rush the album. I kind of wanted to make sure I was happy with it and there was something of substance in it that, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, yeah, for me, I think the challenge is having a career five albums in or six albums in. So that's, you know, that's that's the hard thing nowadays. But um, yeah, so I just I'm having fun touring, I suppose. So we kind of, you know. So you're spending you know. the summer touring. I know you're going to the Newport Folk Festival. Yeah. yeah. But I want to look back because we are right in the middle of summer here in New England. Kids are off summer camp yeah. vacation what was summer like for you as a kid do you have any fond memories or funny stories what did you do as a kid over the summer yeah oh my god so when i was a young kid when i was maybe for six or seven my folks moved out to a very rural kind of like farmland type type area so I've, a lot of good memories of kind of uh oh my god okay picking berries like blackberry picking and stuff and sure then, um, did you keep them in the freezer? Do you, I seem to remember that was like a thing. We would my I, my family would do that sometimes in the summer, and they would save them so we'd have them during the winter. Totally, yeah. You can you can I think that you can keep them in uh, as long as you can keep the frost off them. I think uh, usually they they would just go into into a pie pretty quickly enough. But uh, <laughs> you know, I have to say, or, uh, we now I know why you're stealing all the cookies. There There's you go. Some yeah. childhood thing no, happening totally, here. Totally, yeah. Just the hoarding of sweet no. sweet things. Do you have animals on the farm? Um, no. So we we weren't on a farm. We were surrounded by oh, farms. Okay. So we were kind of like farm locked i suppose it was it was interesting <laughs> but um it was it was great it was kind of like lambs and uh like a lot of lambs i remember being for the first time being kept up at night uh once lambs are born once it gets dark they start freaking out because they can't find their their parents so i just remember the first few years of of, jo- of living out in the countryside being kept up by like distressed lambs all <laughs> night uh that is uh, just ridiculous but no the good memories uh, that's a good band name yeah, distressed, distressed lambs. lambs yeah um <laughs> seaside i live near the seaside so a lot of beach oh, really? going a lot of sea swimming a right lot of kind of and then you're kind of exploring the countryside and kind of doing a bit of that as well too and just right. um yeah little things yeah ever have an injury over the summer I've never broken a bone as You're far as I know. What? Yeah, I've been so lucky. I've never been stung by a bee or a wasp. I don't know how I managed it. I, yeah, knock I, on wood. Exactly. I broke my leg the first day of summer camp at 12 years old. Day number one, just trying to be a hero on the softball field. <sighs> and just the, the rest of the summer is ruined. Do you remember how you did it? Was it like a... Yeah, d- I, I, was, I was protecting home plate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But you did. But you did a damn good job, I'm sure. But no, he was safe, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I was out for the oh, entire summer. Sorry. Right. Well, we appreciate you coming in and doing the mix lounge. It Thank means you. a lot to us. It it's means a lot to the fans. No, it's a pleasure. You know, for you to come in and do this and play the show and all that. And we really do appreciate it. And the new album's just uh, it's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for the support and thank you so much for having us. It's been really fun. And apparently, we did talk to somebody behind the scenes. There are more cookies coming. Hell yes. <laughs> yeah. Amazing.